Annette James. I'm a program coordinator in the Copyright Office, Office of Public Information and Education. In celebration of Black History Month today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Michael Carpenter, who is an amazing visual artist and musician. Michael plays acoustic and electric guitar, the mandolin, and the banjo. He also writes original lyrics and music. Among his many accomplishments, Michael has recently been inducted into the Alabama Blues Hall of Fame. Oh, and by the way, did I mention that Michael is also my cousin? Michael as a creator and copyright owner has often been my muse and has helped inform some of the work that I do at the copyright office, particularly surrounding how the office engages with its users and how we help them engage in their own creativity. So Michael, welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So we're gonna ask you a few questions today so we can find out a little bit more about you and celebrate Black excellence during this wonderful month of Black History celebrations. Tell us about a little bit about yourself and what it is that you create, why creativity is so important to you. Well, a little bit about myself. I'm a uh, self-taught musician and artist. I started years ago uh, affecting my art at a young age and playing guitar when I was around 13. But I had asthma growing up as a kid and I had these awful visions um, when I had go through the episodes. And when the when the, the, the sickness would subside, I would draw and I, would be, I was able to to, to bring these images out of my head that I saw, I couldn't quite get them out because I was formulating them at the time. And as time went on, I was able to, when I draw, I was able to see these images as I was going uh, through my you know, drawing experience. And without the sickness, just the artistic part of it being brought out, I was able to create and get really into myself as well as with the music. So that in itself, both of them sort of balance one another because I couldn't go play outside and play baseball or basketball because I would get sick. So this helped me out uh, with my own uh, self-esteem uh, as a young kid. So who are your inspirations, Michael, and why do they inspire you? Oh, my inspirations are uh, M.C. Escher, mm -hmm. who's a Dutch artist, Salvador Dali, who's an artist as well, Spanish artist, Colonel Eugene Johnson, uh, who happened to be my uncle. He was a bomber pilot during Vietnam and the, uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. He, was, he served an um, awesome experience that he shared with me, as well as Ronald Whiteley, we call him Sonny. They were both instrumental in, 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 in giving me that extra needed self-confidence that, that I didn't have. They played an important part in my, uh, my self-esteem in, in growing up, as well as Escher and Dolly. The theme of this year's Black History Month is the Black family, representation, identity, and diversity. What does this mean to you and your creativity? Specifically, what roles does family play in your creativity? Oh, family plays an important part. Family plays an, a part that allows that individual, and me in particular, my grandmother, Alice Whiteley, was very uh, influential in my self-esteem. I can remember even five years old, six years old, I would go and show her these pictures I would draw, and then she'd stop, and she'd take out time and look at this. She took time out with me. She'd look at it and say, oh, baby, that is so nice. Show me another one. And I'd show her, and I felt so great about myself. That played an important part in my life, as well as my uh, my immediate family. Family plays an important part. They can build, build you up, or they can break you down. In my instance, they build me up with my self-esteem. Played such a crucial part in my life to this day. That's pretty awesome to hear. So Michael, why do you think art is needed today? Art is so important. And art is not just isolated to the visual art. It's so important. Nina Simone said once that art reflects the times. As an artist, we're obligated. We have a mandate to reflect the times. And that's what I try and do with my music and with the art. Not getting so so caught up in the elements of, uh, of the times, but to represent those those times with who that person, that artist, who they are and who I am. That's what I try and represent. I have a mandate. It's not mine to 
to hold in is mine to give. So when I do my art, it's not just mine. It's yours, it's yours, it's everybody. And I, I, I try and give that from my heart. That is very special. What is your connection to copyright and the copyright office and how has copyright influenced and guided your work? Copyright has been a shield of protection with my art, my music. Without it, we're, we're out in the cold without a jacket on. The copyright office has been that security. So you don't have to worry about any outside influencing you, or taking your music, taking your art, or even exploiting you. You, you had that protection. I have been confident and going ahead and pursuing what I'm doing because of that security. Thank you, copyright office. <laughs> you know, we are happy to be here to help you. Would you be interested in sharing some of your work with us? Ah, oh, yes, I have hundreds of pieces, but let me preface, I'm colorblind. Some of the colors might look different to you than it is to me, but I kind of dig them, so, you know, I, I, I do it. This is a timekeeper. Well, this, this particular piece inspired me about the times that we live in. During the 1800s, early 20th century, the artists, they had a certain way of, of displaying their artwork. With me, I'm just adding a continuation of that narrative in my own immutable way. I play, uh, I write, I'm a songwriter, and I play the uh, all instruments. Banjo is, is one of them because banjo is so much a part of our heritage. It came from Mali, Africa, West, West Africa. But during the 1800s, the latter part of the 1800s, we were portrayed in blackface. Black folks sort of abandoned the banjo and they looked down on it. it. It sort of laid there in obscurity. There are some folks still playing traditional style. I do play traditional style, claw hammer, three finger. That's not all inclusive. It's how you approach the banjo and I approach it and I write to it uh, through the elements of, uh, of the times. And this piece I'm gonna share with you is standing in this ocean. This ocean is uh, this world we live in right now. And it feels really deep. <laughs> we all have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. That said, standing in this ocean. <laughs> Standing in this ocean feels really deep. Am I right with my emotions? Emotion grasping with me. One day we'll all find a way to that place of rest. One day for joining me today and for, for letting me get a little bit more insight into particularly how big a role family plays in what it is that you do and just how you are creative. I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Talk right up. We're happy to serve. <laughs>